Hey, GovCon Giants family. Today, we are doing a different type of podcast interview. We are starting an all-new podcast entitled Making a Giant. That's right. It's called Making a Giant. And the podcast is going to be hosted by our very own Maria Martinez. A lot of you know Maria Martinez. She went from working in the background and helping us out as a resource specialist to stepping up into the forefront and going out and winning her own contracts. Now she is an integral part of our organization, helping small businesses get started and advancing to the next step. Well, this new podcast entitled Making a Giant is being hosted by Maria Martinez, where she interviews GovCon EDU students who won their first contract. That's right. Maria is interviewing students who won their first contract. Thank you so much for all the people who gave me comments and feedback saying, Eric, I love your podcast. It's wonderful. But I want to know, how does the person start? Like, where do they get started from? And so, again, oftentimes we are motivated and excited by those persons who are doing tens of millions of dollars with hundreds of employees. But that's not me. And so we decided to make an all new podcast entitled Making Up a Giant. It's where you start and at the very beginning. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Today's guest episode 001 is Chris Facey, the mad guitarist. And so in this particular episode, Chris, uh, he was a former freight broker. He's still a a freight broker. However, as a freight broker, he pursued a transportation readiness contract. So we're going to talk all about that in today's episode featuring our guest, Chris Facey, along with the host, Maria Martinez. I hope you enjoy this episode. Give me your comments, your feedback, I'm excited to hear what you think about it. Looking forward to our next coming episode uh, with Leilani and future guests. So thanks so much for enjoying and watching. By the way, before we start, I just want to let you know we are having a January special for those persons who invest with us at GovCon EDU. Take a look at our website. We're going to be doing an eight-week boot camp. So if you're interested in learning more about the eight-week boot camp, visit GovConGiants.com forward slash education. Thanks, guys. Enjoy today's episode. We're actually here with Chris Facey, and a lot of you guys might recognize him back a few months ago when all this COVID craziness was happening, and he was brave enough to call out Eric when he was talking about freight and the cost of things being shipped to China to the United States. After Chris was bold enough to call out out of everybody, Eric, um, he was brought on a YouTube live to defend his side of things. And the rest has been history. So Chris, welcome. And thank you so much for being here. Oh my God. Well, it's my pleasure. And thank you for having me. You're an amazing host. Thank you. (laughs) So um, Chris is actually one of our students. And if you did not know, Chris this past what was it about a month ago two months ago right after (laughs) right after the fiscal year ended he landed 20 21 million dollar contract yep Yep. so that is his claim to fame now so he was one of the he was the biggest award winner in our GovCon Giants. So you are the giant right now. You are the one that we are looking up to and asking how. But before you were this great old contract winner, um, (laughs) what were you doing? Okay, where are you located? Let's start there. Okay, I'm I'm in Pasadena, California. Uh, My business is based in Boston, Massachusetts. Oh, wow. So from one end to the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm spread out all over the place. And what is Um, your business? So I'm a freight broker. So my business is finding companies who ship, manufacture, distribute uh, large and heavy goods and helping them with shipping their goods from point A to point B. And how long have you been doing it? I've been doing this um, in as a broker for 10 and a half years. Oh, wow. Yeah. That yeah, is, so you true. have the experience and you have the knowledge, which is a lot of people don't have that, but you know how the inner works, how well, things are operating. I feel like I'm still learning a lot. 
But. Well, yeah, our shipping industry has changed um, in the past few years and yeah. big companies came on like Amazon and even like COVID. I know COVID made drastic changes to the way we receive things from day to day. Um, yeah, so you've been doing this for 10 years. You are in California, but your business is out of Boston. Why That's right. did you choose your business to be out of Boston? Well, so I'm, I'm from the East Coast originally, and three years ago, my wife and I moved out here for an opportunity for her, and so I, I took my business with me, although I left it based in Massachusetts. We may go back there someday. I, I don't know. Okay. But, so sunny yeah. California. You yeah. guys are going through a few changes once again because of COVID. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so you are always on the news for us. <laughs> so, so let's go back 10 years ago when you first started the brokering of the freight stuff. Um, okay. What was your initial thought going into this? Were, was it just a job? Was it just something you always wanted to do? Is it what the path you dreamed of? Ooh, I don't know if it was the path I dreamed of. Uh, I, so I, I came out of college um, and I got a job with a trucking company just because the companies were hiring. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And so I was like, oh, I'll do this for, I literally said to myself, I'll do this for six months, get some experience, and then I'll, I'll find a job that I really want. And then they just, they sucked me in. They, they pulled me in. And every time I tried to get out, they would pull me in a little bit more. And then I did that for five years and I did a few different jobs for the trucking company. And I moved through for a couple different terminals around the East coast. And then after five years, I absolutely hated it. And I was, I was ready to quit. And then this opportunity to start a, a brokerage, so I was working for the carrier and I had an opportunity to start my own thing and be my own boss. And so I just, I said, all right, screw it. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm going to give it a shot. And here I am like more than 10 years later. So Still, you, you were just like, I'm done with working for someone else. I'm going to do this on my own. Yeah, absolutely. And I always wanted to, to have a business and like, I, I'm very entrepreneurial, both my okay. parents are like, so I always knew I wanted that in some capacity, but I just, I never dreamed in a million years it would be trucking. Like I. <laughs> what did you no go to school for? English. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It makes no sense. It's, it's, it's a very a, broad uh, subject area. Yeah. Maybe one day you'll it. write a book about your trucking experience journey. Oh, I've, I've thought about it. I've thought about it. <laughs> So, well, I got to write a 50 page uh, contract bid. So that it's kind close of bid, enough. But, yeah. Some yeah. books are shorter than that. Trust yeah. me. I've seen. <laughs> I, I bet I could write a book with less effort than I put into that contract. Oh yes. Yeah. So we all, everyone that's in this industry, we know how proposals could be those night and days and nights and nights and nights of like trying to understand it, trying to make everything fit, make sure you didn't miss anything. It goes way beyond some of us that are just like, don't forget to cross your T's and dot your I's. Oh God. Yeah. I wish it was that. <laughs> <laughs> so your parents were entrepreneurs and I think that has yeah. a lot to do with who who, who you are these days, because a lot of people know me, like my parents came here from another country. Like I never even dreamed of, or even thought of, or had the, even the inkling of starting a business. Cause I remember, oh. I know we we're speaking beforehand, how I met Eric. Um, but when Eric turned to me, he's like, just start your own business. I like looked at him like he was from another planet. Like, are you crazy? Like, I was like, I can't start a business for me. Having your own business and that like you made it already. Like you had to have so much stuff already. You had to have a business. You had to have it running. And he goes, no, yeah. just go on the website and pay your $125 and that's it. And in my head, it's like, it can't be that easy. I'm like, there's no way. But you uh, had that like seed planted in you that you wanted to be your own boss. Yeah, that that's true. I um yeah, that's interesting. I never thought about it. Yeah, when you when you do when you start it, when you pay that fee to the state, you kind of do like and it's that's it. You're incorporated. <laughs> yeah, you're you're official. You yeah. you don't you don't even get a certificate anymore. You get a email money, maybe. 
Yeah, I remember. I thought it was a lot cooler ten years ago. Now, when I have to pay that like that fee in Massachusetts, five hundred bucks a year. Oh wow! So it's like now I'm like ah, oh, like I'm up for my LLC again this year. Like, <laughs> so when you started your business, did it already have momentum going? No, I started from zero, but I had um, I had a lot of customers. I had like a customer base in Boston. Well. Really, was it, my customer base was in New Hampshire, and uh, I started my business in Boston. And so I, I stole as many customers as I possibly could from my company. I was, I was going after my boss's accounts like I was ruthless. It, good fun, you know. But it does take being ruthless and being bold to get you noticed and get you places. Absolutely, yeah. I, I probably the most productive six months of my life was, um, the first six months when I started the business, because I, I had five grand saved up and I, I had no debt. Like I made sure I paid off all my debts. I had about, I figured I had about 10 grand of runway. Okay. And, and then if that didn't work out, I was going to have to find something else, but I made it work out. Like I was like, there's no way I'm not letting this work. Like, and it worked. And that's awesome, though, that it yep. works, because for a lot of us, it does take a lot more effort. Um, yeah. And you having an idea of how it works again, even if it's a small idea how it works, it, it made the process a lot easier. Definitely. So you're in this for five years. And at that point, when did you you were just doing commercial? Right. Yeah, I was doing like um, I was working for on the carrier side. So I worked for a physical like an asset based uh, trucking company, which is, um, yeah, it's a it's a different type of sell. But you have a lot more control over the people and like what happens in the company. Like now I'm on the third party side. So I'm, I'm more like kind of customer service based and like finding uh, different solutions for customers by like using different companies like to find the best fit. Okay. And you're just, people call you up, tell you they have to ship something and you, you have to maneuver what is the best way to get it from point A to point B. Yeah, exactly. So like my, I try to be for my customers, like, um, like their outsourced shipping department. So like if they, like you shouldn't have to know, you shouldn't have to be an expert in shipping in my opinion. Oh, I know that. I totally know that. So for people out there, <laughs> uh, yeah. so for people out there, um, I came to know Chris um, during COVID times and he was the, Eric was like, why are you doing it? Just have somebody deal with it. And I remember I'd spoken to you and you had talked about freight. So I like, all I had to do is pick up the phone. I have this, this, and this. And you're like, how big is the pallet? I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, and there, you're like, is it palletized? I'm like, where do I even get a pallet? So, <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, how much it weighs? I have 50 boxes and good thing that the thing said how much it weighed and things like that. So you are the source for some of us that just need to get it from point A to point B and have no clue what goes in between. Exactly. And you shouldn't have to, because you're, you're much better at other stuff like getting (laughs) contracts and teaching children like where they are in the world and like, like history and Oh, okay. Here's a question. Just an odd, qu- random question. What is the oddest or weirdest thing you had to ship? Do you know what you're shipping? What's the weirdest thing that I've ever shipped? Yeah. Ooh, that's, that's a good one. Um, oh man, I've shipped some weird stuff and, and like, of course I'm, I'm coming up pretty blank right now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, the coolest thing that I've uh-huh. ever did, I'll, I'll start there. I did, um, I have a customer who was doing the, uh, the, the rally towels, the little towels that you wave around at, um, NHL games. Uh-huh. And so I, I got to ship the rally towels for a couple seasons for the Bruins when they were in the playoffs. So that was really cool. That was a lot of fun. Cause I was watching the games <laughs> and I would be like, I shipped those towels. Like I, like I spent all day doing it 
<laughs> and like there they are. People are like waving them around. And and the, and that's the thing. Like people don't even think about like they had to get the product. They have to make it. Then they have to box it. Then they have to get it here. Then they have to unbox it. Make sure it gets there on time because we know yeah. like certain things are very time sensitive. So it'd be pretty cool to see something on TV across the whole nation of something that you helped in yeah. a way make possible. So totally. That's, that's pretty cool. Have yeah. you shipped like huge things? Like I've seen houses and boats and just like all these, we all know how sucky it is to be behind that bit semi with like a wide load and you can't go around them. Oh, I was, I always joke. Like we'll be in the car, my wife and I, and there'll be like a slow truck and I'll be like, damn truckers. Like get out of the way. You're just a waste <laughs> of space. Like <laughs> it's a dumb joke, but I make it every time. <laughs> but you do the, you do trucking and you do every which way boats uh planes any way you could get it there you provide it yeah yeah so trucks uh planes boats if it's going ocean mm -hmm. um train we'll put stuff oh. on rail that's cheap but slow so sometimes stuff goes on rail and people don't want it on the rail and uh that's a bad thing <laughs> but uh oh someday maybe drones i hope Oh, I don't know. We don't have that now, but I like, I want to get into it because I think it's cool. I think commercials. I thought it was happening, but I think it would be really weird if I see a box flying in the air. Yeah, it's weird. I I think it's happening like on a test basis in other countries, not okay. here. Or, you know, those, we gotta, like, or um, isn't it in California where they have the little robots just zooming through the sidewalk delivering stuff? I think it is. Yeah, yeah. That's um, so weird. Yeah, there's so many. There's so much weird stuff that's going to happen in the next 10 years that like, that's just the stuff. You see it happening? Has it changed in the last 10 years already? Oh, it's changed a lot. It's, it's changed a ton. Yeah. Even just the, like the landscape, I've seen a lot of companies go out of business that you'd never think would go out of business. Mm. The pricing just keeps skyrocketing. And that's like, I, it's like funny to look back 10 years ago at our, at like the cost of shipping. Mm -hmm. It was totally different than it is now. Like I, I never would have thought that in 10 years, like you could even like get people to pay for the, the rates that they have now. I and mean, it's crazy, especially right now, because there's so much craziness going on with COVID and so, driving sick. And, so yeah. with that, with COVID, can you tell us a story how you came across Eric? Because we got to know you during the pandemic. So you're doing commercial, you're doing all this stuff. When did mm -hmm. you get that thought process of what is government contract and how I could get my foot in the door? Oh, well, I saw that, that movie, um, the, the, what is it? The arms and the dudes, uh, war, war, war dogs. dogs. <laughs> yeah. I saw war dogs one night. I remember it was like, it was last November. So it was about a year and change ago. Oh. And I was like, I remember thinking when I was watching a movie, I was like sitting there drinking a beer and I was like, is this real? <laughs> and so I like Googled it. And the next day I was like, I'm going to look into that. And the next day I looked into it and I went down a rabbit hole of YouTube. And I, that's, I think that's how I found Eric's videos was on YouTube. And then <laughs> further and further. And then there I was on, in March, like, commenting on his uh on his videos and like being like no you're wrong <laughs> about so, air freight <laughs> so when you commented that he was wrong it was on what the air freight right on um, air freight because of covid it was because of covid yeah so so he he made it oh maybe it was linkedin i can't remember now exactly where it was he made a comment maybe it was on youtube and he was saying like uh Brokers or not brokers, but fr air freight companies are uh, price gouging. Yes, and and I, that's it set me off because because I was like, no, they're not. <laughs> they're not price gouging. Like the cost is going up. The the cost is skyrocketing. And so I very nicely reached out and I was like, hey, Eric, brother, I love you, man. I love your videos, but um, I t disagree with you a little bit. And so like I I, I when I started writing and I just kind of kept going, going, going. And he was like, all right, man, why don't you uh, come on to my channel and, and uh, argue me live? 
<laughs> and I remember that because I remember that he called me and he's like, oh, this guy's because we were in the middle of the pandemic and like he like everybody knows we had a few contracts. So yeah. the thing was like they would tell us a price at like five in the morning and yeah. by noon the price would double. And we're like, why is the price doubling? They're like, mm -hmm. it's air freight. There's just no more room in the planes. There's no planes going to China. So we yeah. were like, that's crazy. Like we're here needing everything. And a glove that costs nothing to make is costing me like 30, 40, even like a dollar per glove to get over here. And that's if I get yeah. lucky and it doesn't sit there. So for right. us, like just how it like, it like, it struck a chord with you. Uh, it, it was the same thing with us. It's like, yeah. what is he talking about? So I remember right. Eric reached out to me. He's like, this guy, uh, well, if he wants to challenge me, let's see if he could do it on YouTube Live. And he's like, reach out to him. And I was like, okay. So I remember setting that up for you guys and you guys just trying to like both argue your points on why yeah. it is, why it isn't in the middle of all of us, like having to hand sew our masks like we were pilgrims back in the right. day. <laughs> like, oh, let me sew my mask because I can't get it over here on a plane or a boat. Right. <laughs> so so right. is that where you finally like put your toe in the dipped your toe in the water into government contracting was that initial because I know you had thought about it because of the movie and everything, but is that when you were like, okay, I'm gonna get into this and yeah, actually do it? It was like around that time because I really like um, I really liked the vibe that you guys had. So that, that kind of like pulled me in. I love I love being able to have like a intelligent discussion. Like we were arguing, but it was very civil and like you know, we were listening to each other. And like I love that. It was like a good debate. And like I think we ended up like saying like, OK, fine. You, you agree to disagree, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Because at the end, I was left like, wait, like there's a draw. Like nobody yeah. like, like I understand both points at the same time. It's like, who's right? Like, Yeah. And no one was. Yeah. I mean, we, we ended up just leaving it like that. But but I was like, yeah, this is a cool. I like the community. Like, I like the feel of it. And so what did you do after that? Um, so I signed up, I signed up for the, for the course. Like that, I, I like started going to the course cause I literally knew nothing. I mean, I still know basically nothing. I know like a little bit more now. That's exactly yeah. the same thing I say, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> There's just so much to know. Like, I don't like it, to be like, I would never, I'll never think that I'll get to the apex of like knowing government contracting, you know, like it's just, there's that so goes much. to show like you can't. And I hear that a lot from people. It's like, Oh, but I'm, I don't know everything yet. And I'm mm -hmm. like, if you wait till you try to learn every single thing, you'll never get into this. Like you have to go into it knowing what you know, because at the end of the day, you know more than anybody else. Right. Right. If not, you'll never get into it because you'll never know it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, actually, you know, it's funny when you said that I just um, it's kind of like um, and I know I, I was laughing with Eric about this, but um, I, I was telling him after like I got that award for that uh, May talk, the IDIQ. I was like, I got to go finish your course now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but I tell like, people, don't ask me what percentage mine is. <laughs> uh -uh. I I stopped trying. I'm like, I got to just like jump in and, and like dive in and force myself to do it, you know? So you went from not knowing anything, but you've been in business for about what, five plus years at this point. Yeah. Well, 10 years on my own. And 10 then years. years on, oh, yeah. so, so about 15, 15 years. Yeah. So then you watched a movie. You said that you would be brave enough to drive through the triangle to get your merchandise to your destination. <laughs> <laughs> then you were right. bold yeah. enough to call out somebody on YouTube <laughs> that has 200 <laughs> plus videos and go live with them. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're inside this course to try to learn how to do it on your own. Right, right. Now I'm like, I'm going to learn. I can learn from this guy. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> he's, 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 he's just not a face talking. And not right. knowing what he's saying. And, and, I, and, I, and I think that's very important for everyone to hear is that Eric actually knows this. Like oh, yeah. he 
coming from someone that works beside him, he lives this. Like yeah. there yeah, is yeah. no conversation that could go without talking about work. <laughs> 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 like well, anything I mean, would yeah, bring, yeah. yeah from yeah. anything would bring up a conversation any place anywhere up in the sky in a seaplane going to see whales we're talking about work <laughs> 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 on his yeah. birthday so it's things like that so then you start the course and you start with us and then uh yeah I started I started the course I started like ripping through it as much as I could I started a um my, my TML, my target market list. And, um, I worked on that. I got it up to like 300, like to the point where I like was working on 300 different contacts, like throughout in the different agencies I identified. And, uh, I was just hustling and hustling and hustling, just trying to figure out, like, just still trying to figure out like what the lay of the land was, you know, like still not really knowing. So anything. you don't mean all I have to do is register on Sam. They're going to call me. Ah, I wish it was that easy. <laughs> Although that's that was pretty pretty hard too, getting registered on Sam. <laughs> I mean, he makes it sound easy, but I thought that was pretty difficult. Like I had a pretty tough time with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's like, like, little things that will get you stuck. Like yeah. small. Like for me, it was the IRS ten match. Yep. I got denied that. And I'm like looking at it. I'm like, I know I'm spelling my name right. Like I've been spelling it for 30 plus years. I'm sh- I'm like, and I'm like, M, M, A, <laughs> like yeah. I'm going through yeah, my yeah. name, like a kindergartner again. And so, so yeah, so there's stumbles, but you kept on going, not understanding anything. You kept on going on. Just kept pressing on. And I think at some point I showed I showed Eric, like I asked him for help, like I got far enough. So I was like, I, you know, I feel like I've really been hustling hard and like really trying to learn it. And this is after a, a probably a couple of few months. And um, I, I ended up asking him for help for something. And, and he was like, all right, well, show me what you've done like for work. And he was like, show me your target market list. And I think he thought that I was going to show him like a, you know, 10, like a quick spreadsheet that I threw together and I, I opened up my spreadsheet. I started scrolling and it was like in the hundreds and he was like, he was like, Jesus, man, like, all right, all right, we're going to get you a contract. He's like, I promise. I promise we'll get you a contract, which is like a great feeling. Cause I, I felt like he was like, I, I believed him and he was, he was right. He stuck right by me the whole time while I was doing that. I definitely, definitely could not have gotten that award without him. So talking about your award, where did you find this great opportunity? So actually it was, we were um, having our weekly 4 p.m. GovCon. I'm like, it's not 4, but yeah, for you it's 4 p.m. Like smack in the middle of the day, you're on these calls. Right, right. Well, that's true. I I forget it's 7, it's actually 7 p.m. East Coast Mm -hmm. time. But yeah, for me, it's like, that's why a lot of times you guys would see me, I'd be in my backyard or like, you know restricted with COVID and everything. Everybody's at home. Because all this is happening during COVID now. Right, right. Okay. Everything during COVID. So yeah, one day, this was after I'd already gone through and like asked Eric, like, hey, can you like kind of guide me like where I should be? And um, we, he had on this young kid. I always forget how old he was. I say he was 16. 16. Yeah, 16. Okay, yeah, that kid on his podcast. And then that night, like we were talking about something in the meeting and just like people were psyching each other up. And so I came in after the meeting was over and I, I started scrolling through beta Sam and lo and behold, like that afternoon, this contract um, solicitation was posted. And my, I remember my eyes like bulge out of my head. I was like, Oh my God, this is the one, like, this is, I can do this. Like, I can, this is like right up my alley. And then, um, the hardest like four weeks of my life ensued after that, (laughs) like trying to figure out how to write a bid and stuff. So I was actually going on vacation the next week, which was, which was good because I ended up not being on vacation just working on that bid the whole time. (laughs) Oh, wow. Four weeks. Well, it took me, yeah, I would say it was about, it was, it was like four weeks because they extended it. 
So it was like originally it was going to be three weeks. And then one of the other contractors asked them to extend it. And of course they, you know, they always extend it a few days. So. Yeah. And, and I remember that my first contract, I called them to ask for an extension and yeah. they, they did it. And, yeah. I, and, I, and I will never forget. I'm like, I didn't even think about it. Like Eric said, like, sometimes you call and they give it to you. So it wasn't even a thought process. I just did it. If you would ask normal me to do it on a normal day that it was not expiring in a few minutes, I would have never done it. I'd be like, no, they're not going right. to do it. Like, why would, they, why would they do that? Like, no. Right. <laughs> yeah, they, I feel like they always, they're always behind too. So <laughs> they're probably like yeah we need a couple like we just need someone to ask us you know <laughs> so when you opened up this where did you find it beta sam yeah it was on beta sam okay. yeah so when you opened up all the paperwork and the solicitations um what was your feeling like going into it like totally overwhelmed like completely overwhelmed i didn't understand anything like i did just keep googling stuff and poor eric i I was like texting him and calling him all week to like try to try to like uh, help figure out like even just the language and mm-hmm. a lot of it. But I feel like I, I learned a ton just doing that one. Like if I had done the bid and not gotten any award, it still would have been a, I would still view it as like a huge win just to go through the process. Where did you feel like it was a good place to start? with just having all this information and like not knowing where to begin, like, where did you figure out that was your starting point? Um, do you mean like, like at what, at what point did I feel like I could take on a bid or like, when did you, where did you start this proposal writing it? Like, do you start with like just typing your name and like, you know how every author just writes one line and just like looks at it and right. like, what's next? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pre- I mean, pretty much. It's like, a like have you ever heard that saying, like you get behind yourself and push mm-hmm. sometimes it was like that. I just, I was like, I guess I will just open up a Google doc and I I wrote the bid number on the top. I was like copying and pasting the bid number. And then I just started like answering. I went down and answered every question. And, um, I put like red marks, like throughout the, like the weeks that I was working on it. <clears throat> And then my job at the the last couple of days was like, get rid of all the red marks because mm-hmm. those were all like questions that I had or like unanswered or something I needed to talk to Eric about, you know, to like help me. If it was like a FAR question, I had a lot of FAR, F-A-R mm-hmm. questions. So yeah, I don't know. I just kind of like stumbled through it blindly. I feel like, like looking like three feet ahead at a time and no further. Yeah. And, and that's how it has to be like you and, and you listened to the question and you thought about it a different way. So I'll ask you that one. Oh, when, sorry. when, when, did, no, no, it was a good one though. When did you feel like this was actually possible? Cause we don't go into doing a proposal and bidding something without the thought process of it's possible. Cause I'm not going to do something just for a learning experience. Yeah. Um, had I known who I was going up against, um, I, I might have just been like, well, <laughs> maybe I'll just, uh, I'll just wait, you know, hold off. But I didn't, I didn't really think about it all that much. I just thought it was something that I knew that we could do. It was kind of a stretch. But, like, I once I, like, kind of pooled the resources mm-hmm. um, with the agency that I work with, I was like, we, we have this covered for sure. We could do a good job. Um, and I like knowing who the other government contracting competitors are, like, I, I feel comfortable like going toe to toe with them. Oh, so yeah. You're a bold one, my friend. (laughs) (laughs) Cause I never look at competitors. Cause like you said, sometimes if we look at competitors, we're just going to be like, Oh no, it's, I'm not ready. Yeah. And then when you, how long was your proposal? Was it different volumes? Oh, it was multiple volumes. Yeah, there was, it was multiple volumes. There was, um, there was sample, uh, sample uh, responses, like um, event responses. Okay. This is like a disaster response. What if? Yeah. It was like, hey, what if there's a terrorist attack in Anchorage, Alaska? And we have to send, that was the real question. Um, this is all public. I'm not disclosing anything that's yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I had to like 
I had to create like a sample response, like timing who, like who would get what phone call at what time. And like, when would we be able to dispatch a truck? What, when would the planes take off that we were going to charter? Like fun stuff. Like I actually really enjoyed that. It was like, (laughs) did you do this all on your own? Well, so I was organizing it, but a lot of the information that I was getting, like, like for chartering planes, Mm -hmm. I had to go through someone else at, at my company. So I was like, I was pulling in all these resources. And I, of course I told them like, you know, here's the opportunity. It's, it's $20 million plus over two years. And everyone like your ears perk up when you hear that you're like, that would, you know, everybody's like, this is a cool project to work on. Yeah. No, no one had heard of the agency like the, that we were working for. So yeah, no, it was, I was at the center of it, but I was like the hub and spoke sort of like pulling in information. From and then people. you get all their information, you put it together into one document, one doc or a few documents yeah. in the order that they want you to do it in the Semi-fair. way <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to make it all seem sense in what they want, because we all know they're very, very specific on mm. where they want things, how they want them, and font, even down to the font size sometimes, and what the subject or the title has to be of your document. Oh, it's funny you say that because um, I kept... I kept reducing the size of my font to try to get within the page restriction. And then I, the, after I'd done the whole thing, I came across this line that said, must be in time, you know, Times New Roman by 12. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> like, now I gotta redo you can't the even whole include thing. anything. <laughs> like I'm an aerial size 10. Like I'm not even like I'm double now. And so I had to like redo the whole thing. That happened like oh. yeah. Yeah, it was it was brutal. Ooh, that would hurt. See, it's like you went through all this hard work and thought processes trying to make things fit, and then you can't even make it fit. <laughs> that was brutal. That was brutal. <laughs> so, what did your people around you in your circle, not people that are working on the contract, like your wife, your parents, your close friends, think about you in these three, four weeks that you're going through all this? Well, I happen to be with most of my family for like the main week that I was working. Like the week that I put the most work in was the week I was on vacation because I had the most time. I had the most time. I had all my, my week was completely free because I wasn't, I didn't need to work. You know, I'd already, I already planned it out. Um, but the opportunity was too big to pass up. So they kind of understood. Okay. At least you have understanding. Well, maybe because you, like you said, they come from that kind of background of you have to put in the work when you can and when you have to. Yeah. Like yeah. me showing up, I mean, I don't know if my mom still knows what I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel you, Maria. I, I really do. Like, I totally get that. Sometimes I don't think we know exactly what we do. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's true too. It's tough to explain. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. So at least you had that, like, kind of like the support system of like, leave him alone. He's working. He's going to yeah. bring home the big bucks one day. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. No, they were very understanding. Yeah. That's awesome. And then when you finally complete everything, you're like, okay, it's done. You step away and you send off that email. I know that feeling. What was that feeling of? It was like I had a beer in each hand. It was like, it was like double fisting right after. I was like, ah. I finished, I finished with um, like four minutes left. Like I remember I was sitting at this table looking at the clock and there, and it was literally, I was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm like not quite done. And I like finally, finally got it done. And there was just minutes on the clock. It was a huge relief, but of course, then it was like weeks and weeks and weeks of back and forth with the with the guys from the government because they had a bunch of questions. Um, they had to like re-explain stuff and like have all the everyone who worked on the bid mm-hmm. like kind of redo things and like reprice things and like clarify. So it went on and on and on. So it wasn't you just hit submit and then you get a nice email or phone call saying you won. No, it was like it, it was like <laughs> sending it into the ether. It was like I 
you know, I made sure that they got it and they, they were like received, you know, and then I just, I didn't hear anything for uh, a couple weeks. And I reached out to him and was like, Hey, just want to make sure I didn't like miss an email where you guys said that I won the whole thing, you know, or like, <laughs> Was there a point, um, even like you send it, you thought the hard work was done. Like you wrote it, like all the numbers, all the scenarios, everything sent off into the internet world and someone received it on the other end. Cause you get that nice email that says received. Right. Uh, right and then right. you're like, I'm done. I'm done. And then all these questions come like, is there a point that you're just like, just throw, throw your hands up in the air. It's like, ha, like what more can you ask for? Oh, absolutely. Like pretty much every time it's like, Oh God, I give up. Like, I don't even, I don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's like, I don't care anymore. Like just forget yeah, it. I'm yeah, move on. I'll, uh, I can go work at like McDonald's or something. Right. <laughs> but what kept you going? What kept you answering email after email after phone call? The, the zeros uh, on the end of the, uh, <laughs> The IDIQ. I've never seen that many zeros. So on a realistic percentage scale, what percentage did you really, truly and honestly believe that you were going to get this contract? Oh, like less than half a percent if I had to put a <laughs> percentage on it. Like, <laughs> I didn't think there was any, I, I thought there was like a snowball's chance in hell that I would get the an award. Just because like, I, you know, not only am I new to government contracting, so I don't even know how to write a bid or, you know, I'm like figuring everything out for the first time. And like some of the stuff I'm calling Eric out cause I can't even like figure, I can't even figure it out. And I'm like sitting here for 30 minutes trying to read one paragraph. Um, so there was that. And then also going up against competitors that are much bigger and much, much more experienced with government contracting. You know, I'm like, all this year I was reading about, I'm like watching all these like $750,000 contracts go to my competitors. I'm just like, ah, oh God, I want that so bad all year. And then I'm going up against them. So I figured there wasn't a very good chance that I would. And then one day you get a nice, what, is it a phone call or an email? That you it was got? an email. Do you know the time period in between the time you submitted it and the day you got the email? Um, I, so I submit, I can figure it out. I submitted it in around mid August and then the email came in like late October, I think. So it was, mm. it was a couple months, two and a half months. And there was a lot of like in, back and forth yeah. in between price negotiations and all that stuff. Yeah, it was a quick email. I thought when I first opened it up, I was like, uh -huh. oh, I, lost. I knew it, I lost. And it was like, your price is accepted. And I was like, oh my God, like, hold on. Can, can we swear? I don't know. Yeah, you can. I won't, I won't, I won't. Holy moly. Can, holy moly. <laughs> holy moly, Batman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't, Im like, and it had all the zeros you had seen and all those zeros that kept you motivated to answer every email, every phone call, ask a thousand questions, the, all yeah. those zeros were on that contract. Yeah, they were there. They were all there. And I'd already, I'd broken it down a million ways, you know, like trying to figure out like, oh, if we get this portion and like this and like. Like if they were to break down the contract, like how you would maneuver the numbers. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. Who did you call first? Um, my wife had just left, so I called. Oh. I know. It was a bummer. It was a bummer. I called her and she was like, damn it, I'm at work. Like I can't even like I can't I wanna jump like, up and yell and scream. Oh, I remember <laughs> that you called Eric and I happened to be there with him. Like I'm in That's the right. That's right. You guys are shopping. <laughs> You were shopping. You were you were getting some gooch, as I recall. I was um, getting my bonus. Thank you. 
I was getting my, ever since I started this, honestly, and, and it goes to a, a good story. Ever since I started this, I used to say, man, my first contract, I'm going to get me my Louis Vuitton purse and my red bottom shoes. Like my first contract, first contract came. I got that check and I was like, ooh, I can't spend that much money on just a purse and some shoes. Like I work too hard. Yeah, like, I rent. I like <laughs> that hurts. Like I can't do that. Second contract. I'm like, Oh, but my it, the it looks so nice in my bank account. <laughs> so finally, um, I I made a deal with Eric. Like if we hit a certain target and a certain goal, that I would get yeah. it. So that's and where we were. Thank you. For, uh, so awesome. I should know the date that you got your contract. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's right. <laughs> we were both celebrating. I remember that. So yes, yeah. I remember that we were in the middle of the mall. We were at Neiman Marcus or Nordstrom's, one of those. And I remember he's like, come over here. And I was like, and then you told me, like, I, I did it for your wife. I'm in the middle of this high-end store. Like, oh, my God. Ah! I'm like going crazy. Like, no way. No, no home. No switching yeah, way. <laughs> like, no. And then when you told me, and this was before I even knew the amount. And then when you told me the amount, I was like, <laughs> like wow so yeah. i know like i was like super duper duper excited for you yeah that was awesome that made me feel really good because you guys were like how excited you guys were it was like that you were as excited as i was like that's <laughs> awesome that's so cool yeah so yeah. then you became our like oh like you <laughs> did it like this is what and and talking from someone that works closely to Eric like this is what we do it for like we want you guys to win like we want to celebrate those wings because those mean so much more than what we can do especially with Eric and Eric tells me that all the time it's like yeah because he we, he see he tells us about his contracts but he gets more excited when you guys win them when I win them I remember yeah. my first one and things like that so it's like those are that's why we do the YouTubes we do the podcast we do the free resources now the Spanish video especially the Spanish videos and now that I work in a Spanish community like I want to do even more like ooh, like help my people <laughs> out here like Aww. please so so yeah <laughs> So, and so now that you finally got your award and a lot of people think it's like, oh, you get the award and you start working, you get paid. No. Well, yeah, it's, like, oh my God. I wish it was like, I wish it was that simple, but, um, I was telling you the other day, I found, so I got the award originally thought it was a sole source award, but it's actually a May talk. So I'm, so now I'm back, I'm back in the mix, like competing on, on price for each of these individual task orders, which is fine. I told you before, I'll go toe to toe mm -hmm. with anybody and that's the best thing for the government. So that, you know, that's, that's, it is what it is. Um, yeah. But at least you're not competing against 5,000 other people now. No, it's a very small pool. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. So your chances of getting it are like so much better than anybody else out there right now. I'm trying to find it. You got your award on. October 20, I'm going to say the 28th. No, it was before October. Was it? It was before mm -hmm. October? Man, it was, so we can... No, October 12. Oh, here it is. October 9th. Oh, wow. Okay. That was, that was way before I thought it was. Man, so, so yeah, two months, that was two months ago. We we still nothing. It doesn't even come close to starting. And that's the thing. Even with like projects like ours, like the construction ones that we are get sole source, like we we get the email, we sign that nice box and we mm -hmm. send it back. And then it's like, we wait. Then we wait, we wait. again. Yeah. So it's wait. like we wait and we wait and we wait. So yours is now you're waiting again for that first like call to you guys that we need you. Like, let's do this. Yeah, I mean, like we've been trying to um, just get them to to issue or just find out, like, hey, when when is the kickoff meeting going to be? Because we don't even, you know, I've reached out to my main contact. It was the uh, the CEO, and now it's the COR, but he's busy. I suspect he's busy working on some other 
um, distribution things that might be going on right, right now. <laughs> um, and this kind of took a backseat to that. That's my guess anyways, but yeah, yeah, I don't know when it's going to happen. But, but as you know, your patience has paid off before. Right. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, you get another nice email or phone call and you're like, let's go. And you're at it again. Yep. Yeah. And in the meantime, I'll just keep I'll just keep looking for opportunities. And that was my next question. What are you doing now? Now that you know that you could put it together, now that you know that you could get another an award, because that's the yeah. thing, like after that first one and somebody else was telling me, it's like, what keeps you going? She's like that high. It's like that next yeah. award high. It's like that next contract. It's like every time you get one, it's like you get all amped up for the next one. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, I imagine that you could just chase that dragon forever. <laughs> you know, that, that's like sales, like times 10 or a hundred. Yeah. So now <laughs> you're right back where, and I, and, and people, we have to think about it. It's like, okay, you get an award. Let's say you did it, but now you have to go find the other one and go find right. the other one. So right. what are you doing to find that next one? Yeah. So I, I, um, I like to write out like, uh, like 10 X lists. So I'll, I'll like, I'll challenge myself to come up with like 10, 10 ways, 10 different ways. This is like a Scott, um, the guy who wrote Dilbert, Scott <laughs> Adams. This is like a Scott Adams thing. He, he'll say like, like try to diversify, you know, like, like you would a portfolio. You should do that with sales. So I'll try to come up with like 10 different ways that I could, um, reach out to government agencies or whatever to try to find new contract mm -hmm. opportunities. So I came up with like six really good ones that, that I'll pursue next. It's all part of my government contracting evil master plan. <laughs> 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 so, so you're still at it. You're back right where you were a few months ago, trying to find that next one. And this is my favorite part, the hunt. That's, that's what I love is like the, the lead up to it, you know, like the, like getting the award, that was like amazing and like exciting, and like fun. But like, I really love the hunt, like the chase. Yeah, hindsight, right? Because when yeah. you're in it, is it as exciting as <laughs> as when that's you're? <laughs> no, that's like that's the fun part is when you because you don't know, you know, like what's the opportunity? Like, could be anything. Oh yeah. And yeah. these days, um, I've been a little bit out of it because I went back to the normal people world. But <laughs> but start no, but I'm telling you, start <laughs> well, that's part time though. That's part time. This is full time. Stuff. I just I yeah. just told somebody that though. I just told that because uh, I was I just joined this Facebook group and one one of the questions was hobbies, and okay. you know what my response was? I'm like, well, I just went back to teaching, so I guess that's really my hobby. <laughs> That's your job. That's your job. <laughs> and your part job. Oh man. So, alcoholic, but, but doing these, and then I had, a, I spoke to somebody else yesterday. Like, she's like, Maria. And then it, actually, I got to invoice the Coast Guard last night. Like ah. 11 o'clock at night, I was invoicing the Coast Guard. And just talking to you guys and invoicing brought that, that itch back. <laughs> like, I'm like, ooh, I'm, I'm going back. I'm like, ooh. I'm like, I'm like, when is school over? I'm done. Like, like it, it brought back that excitement. Like you said, it's the hunt, that exciting part of finding things. And it's like, oh, I found this. And like, oh, I got that call back. And I turned this in. Now I'm waiting. And like, it's crazy. And but I think it takes a little bit of crazy to, to get this done, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But yeah, it is. It's like digging for gold, kind of. I love you. you get like this, like, primal, like, you feel like you're going to find some sort of, it is kind of like a treasure a little bit when you find a contract that pays out. So, so I'm excited to, I'm going to reorganize my day All to right. go back into it. Awesome. So... That's something I haven't told many people, but I'm counting, I'm, I'm going back. I, you're a hustler. Yeah, I, I like, I'm, I bet you're an amazing teacher, but you're definitely a hustler. You just, you are. My, my dad says that. My dad's 88. And even when I quit teaching and, and between things, he's like, I never worried about you. He's like, you always had to find a way to figure it out. Like you found yeah. a way to make money, like 
It ne- you never really worried me too. Like, we're, you're going to need somebody. So. Yeah, you never worry about a hustler because it's just, it, you're it's always, just, you're backed against the wall. You're always going to figure it out. You're going to figure it out. Yeah. So yeah. I'm excited to, to, I might come back to it, rejoin the yeah. game. <laughs> so, you yeah. just need a little break. You need to step away for a little and while. And that's what I, I tell people. You, sometimes you have to step away to, to understand and like I stepped away from teaching and yeah. then I'm like I miss it I miss it I miss it but coming back mm. right now it's like but I miss this too <laughs> so it's just figuring <laughs> things out right now um yeah. so what's Evan, next yeah. I, I don't know I feel like there's like a few different opportunities that I want to pursue like uh one of the, like my the biggest thing for me would be to like get involved with like the DOD um and like moving Department of Defense free. And that's oh. I, actually Eric told me, he was like, if you want to do that, I think that's, that's, that was what our conversation was about. I, I told him, he was like, where are you getting stuck? Cause I, I started looking into it and then he advised me, he was like, go find some lower hanging fruit first before you like try to go through the 10 levels of debt to get into the Department of Defense. So like at some point I would like to do that. Um, but yeah, like I've, I attended a couple of NASA events and networking there. Uh, I think there's some opportunities with the VA and then, yeah, I don't, I don't know what else there's, I'm, I'm still trying to like figure out where the, the good opportunities are for trucking. Yeah. And that's been one of the hardest questions. We've had a lot of people come and why like trucking, 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 but it's like, we have, you we're still trying to figure out where that sweet spot is for your industry. And like Mm. you said, there's all these bigger companies out there that have been doing this for years. So agencies are like, Oh, they they get it done. It's easy just to give it to them, just to give it to them. And so somebody like you comes along and challenges that. Right. So that's what it takes. Yeah. That's one of the companies that also is in the inner circle of this award. This may talk is the like whale, like the whale. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so you've, it's been a year and maybe a month since you started all this with us. And no, it's been less. Yeah. That you knew about it because you didn't come into YouTube till COVID. And that was like March kind of. March. Yeah. So March was like really. July, August, September, October, November, December. Nine months. In yeah. nine months. Yeah. What has been the biggest lesson. Ah, uh, what's been the biggest lesson like since I started? Yeah. I have to say it's uh just to ask for help and maybe not like not reaching out by phone call to you and Eric or or even text but just like um and this may be a thing that's like very personal to me like I I need to like learn to like use the resources that are available and like you guys are an amazing resource. So like, yeah, try to find the, the answer. If, if the answer is out there in the course somewhere, like, of course I'm going to like look there first or like yeah. obviously do research and stuff. But, but like, if it's a, a far question, like for instance, I'm dealing with a, like a legal thing right now. And Eric referred me to a lawyer who's going to help me kind of figure out the, mm-hmm. You know, it's just like a little bit beyond where I feel comfortable doing and I shouldn't do it because it's a legal thing. It should be, yeah. I should pay a little bit for it, you know? So, so yeah, I think ask for help. That's been my biggest thing. And that, that's what like helped me. I had to ask for help a million times putting, putting the contract together. And as a result, I'm a lot better at it now than I was even four months ago or whenever I started. Yeah, and even completing the con- the proposal and stuff, like it gives you confidence. Absolutely, like, the confidence you got from it was just you can't you can't pay for that. You can't learn that again. No, definitely not. Well, any advice for all of us out there trying to dip our toes in and not? Because I don't think you dipped your toe in, by the way. I think you just like <laughs> cannonballed it into the pool. <laughs> You're, you know, that was like, oh, how's the water? You're like, no, I'm going to challenge someone. Oh, yeah. No, I full on like tree swung <laughs> involved in. <laughs> like, uh, I think that's, a, that's the best way to do it. Like, 
like, yeah, do the course and like kind of figure out, get the lay of the land a little bit and like do the like target market list, like helped me out a lot. I made hundreds of phone calls before I found this opportunity. And then but when I found it, I cannonball. Mm-hmm. And that's what people need to hear. I think most of the time is that it does take work. It's not like you're just going to get into this and things are going to be easy. Like there are things that you're not going to understand. Trust me. Like there are a lot of words in certain things, like especially the far. It's like the far. I remember someone lost a contract because they didn't like cross the little check mark on the farce. Oh. So like I go through each line to make sure I don't have to check up do not, will not, all those things. Mm. And it gets confusing. It gets very overwhelming. Yeah. Um, even the target market list, it's like, it's, it's, but, but you have to put in the work and you are the perfect example that you did put on the work because you didn't just go visit family that you haven't seen and just laid back and sip on mimosas or fancy water. <laughs> uh, you actually were working and yeah. a lot of and that's one similarity we all share is that our family sees that work and yeah. then we are able to show our stories because of the work that we've done yeah totally so yeah thank you so much Aww. this is <laughs> awesome I, I love hanging out with you so this is just like i a- thought you were gonna come here with a song with all the guitars always in the background i don't even have time to play music anymore because all i do is oh so you you music. did play music though it's not just the wife oh yeah no i'm i'm uh i've been a guitarist i started playing 25 years ago actually i was thinking about i'm, I'm 37 i started when i was 12. So yeah, I've played guitar for a, a quarter of a century. Oh wow. Where have you played? We've played with my wife. We've played at uh, a lot of places around like Boston. Um, so like uh TT the Bears, you know, like kind of smaller, mid-sized venues, nothing more than like one time we did open for Hunter Hayes. Oh, which is that was cool. It was like a sold out crowd. Two thousand people. So awesome. That was that was really cool. That was like one of the most fun. That was the most fun show that we've ever played. Cause it was like the crowd was just awesome. You want to talk about a high? Uh huh. Get get on stage and play ten songs for a crowd of like screaming sixteen year old girls. <laughs> like that's that's, Hunter's, that's his demographic you know yeah they're, crazy, they're insane they're absolutely like all emotion you know when you're when you're up on stage can you just can you see anybody because i can't imagine you just see like people and just hear the roar yeah no you, i black out and it's like also like lights are like directly in your eyes so you can't focus on anybody you can't see anybody anyways so Oh, so you mean when my favorite country star is like, hey, you right there. He's not really looking at me. (laughs) Well, yeah, I mean, those guys are like 100 percent pros, whereas, you know, I was just like kind of ass backwards, backing into it, you know, riding on my wife's coattails. (laughs) Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> oh, well thank you once again happy happy holidays to you happy holidays to you as well thank you it was a, it was a pleasure to, to be your third guest right <laughs> yeah this is the third on, one and we'll see on how the maria podcast so can we do like a spin should we do like a spin out or what is a hurricane can day? i start like a little one and spin out and then turn into the giant <laughs> <laughs> or the baby goat the baby go inside the hurricane <laughs> there you go yeah yeah the goat yeah <laughs> the cow thank yeah. you very much have a thank good you. day all right you too i'll talk to you Marie.